is 137F and how did it crack not one, but two murder cases of young women at an Indiana university? Hi everyone, my name is John Lorden. Welcome to Brain Scratch Case Cracked. Thanks for joining me here today. Our story starts with Brooke Elizabeth Baker, a 19 year old in 1997. She was a sophomore at Vincennes University in Indiana. Her major was investigative journalism. And on September 7th, 1997, tragedy struck. Brooke would be stabbed multiple times and sexually assaulted. Her brother would find her the next day when he was just stopping by to visit his sister, as he frequently did, and he immediately called the authorities. When they arrived on scene, they noticed some things that were a little strange about a crime scene like this. One of them is that water was left running in her bathroom, and when they checked, they could see that her shower head was still running, and there was some towels in the tub area. It looked like there might have been some cleaning supplies that were also moved around. From the wounds, it appeared that Brooke had been assaulted with a steak knife, and it seems like the killer even tried to wash up after himself. They found a steak knife that was bent in the sink in Brooke's kitchen. They tested it, and they were able to recover some flesh from it, flesh that matched Brooke's DNA. She had been dealing with some recent threats due to a story that she said she had been investigating. She was very public about this story with her family and with uh, friends of hers. She said that there was a potential date rape that had happened at a local fraternity, and apparently some members of the fraternity began harassing Brooke. She decided to move off campus. She moved into a home that was near the university and owned by a campus police officer. Police, once they started digging into this case, uh, decided to look into this date rape situation and check out this fraternity. They were first met with a lot of information that seemed to contradict what Brooke was saying, but they did find someone that said she was indeed a victim of date rape. She'd even filed a complaint about it. When they interviewed her, police came to the conclusion that this was not necessarily a date rape case but more of a case of consensual sex with some heavy regrets afterwards. Another important piece of evidence that the killer left behind was his own DNA stained in her bed. This sample became known as 137F among investigators, and they knew if they found a match to that, they had their person. So they decided to run DNA tests against all of the members of the fraternity. Unfortunately, none of those DNA samples matched 137F. Brooke also told her family members that she was starting to get some pretty creepy vibes from her new landlord. Apparently, he would drive by very frequently. He would shine lights in through the windows and peer into the windows. And on several occasions, he decided to let himself into her rental without her knowing. On one specific occasion, he actually went all the way into her bathroom while she was taking a shower and she found out that he was in there. Uh, detectives, once again, take a DNA sample from him and unfortunately, there is no match. Despite the detective's best efforts, the case does indeed go cold and it would take another two years before they would get some movement that might help them break Brooks' case. Two years later, Erica Norman, also a student at VU, is a broadcasting major. Her landlord decides to call the authorities when she hears water running in Erica's apartment and no one will come to the door. The authorities show up and enter and they are met with what looks like another crime scene. However, Erica is nowhere to be found. And what's interesting about this crime scene is they once again find the shower running with towels in the bathtub. They do see signs of a bad struggle. The apartment is in disarray and they do see some blood on a wall. However, there are no signs of Erica. The detectives begin their investigation and quickly find out that Erica was last seen leaving a bar at 3 a.m. with a man named Brian Jones. The detectives interview him and he says he indeed did go to Erica's apartment that night. However, she fell asleep on the couch. He put a blanket on her and then simply left. At that point, the detectives don't have any reason to hold him. They don't have a body, so they let him go, and they continue their investigation, now focusing a bit into Brian. That's when they learn that Brian also knew Brooke Baker. 
They go to interview Brian again, this time at his place, and they notice while they're interviewing him that there is a red spot on his shoes, although it does look like his shoes were run through a washer. They decide to take those shoes, and they ask him if they can look around. He says it's his laundry day, he's been doing laundry all day, but please feel free. And they start looking, and they notice in the bathroom that there is a pair of jeans that are drying that have been thrown over the door. And it looks like that they've been recently wet. They figure if he is potentially their suspect and he had any evidence on him in terms of splatter, he might have tried cleaning himself off in his own shower, essentially showering with all the clothes on that he was wearing when he did his crime. So they decide to test the bathtub and they do get an immediate hit for blood and they take a sample from there as well. They also ask him at that point if they can take his DNA. Surprisingly, he lets them. Soon after, they decide to arrest him on an outstanding warrant he has for an unrelated misdemeanor charge. However, this is only good to hold him for a few days. They send samples of his DNA over to the lab and ask the lab to work around the clock to try to get that analyzed before he is released. The analysts do their work, and they do indeed find that there is a match between Brian and 137F. Brooks' case has officially been cracked. Brian Jones was arrested for the murder of Brooke. Ten days after his arrest, a farmer working in Illinois looks in his cornfield and finds a grisly discovery. He locates the missing body of Erica Norman. The blood from the shower that the detectives took, plus the blood spot that was found on Brian's shoe, do match with Erica. So he gets 60 years when put on trial for killing Erica, and then goes to a separate trial for killing Brooke, where he receives an additional sentence. So 60 years plus life without parole. There is no chance of this guy getting out at all. And that case is cracked. Um, that is how 137F helped crack two cases. And it's really interesting to see what's happening with DNA nowadays. I'm even seeing some cases where occasionally you might have a criminal that's not in the DNA system. They have no prior convictions. Um, so they don't have a DNA profile in CODIS or any of those other systems. And they're starting to use familial DNA, essentially just the pieces of your DNA that tie to other family members. And through that, they can still find you. Essentially, if you have a family member that has been charged and they are in the system, they can identify those close matches to you, use a little deductive reasoning, figure out if you're the one and then try to get a DNA sample from you. Uh, even if you don't agree to give a DNA sample, they have a lot of interesting tricks. Um, you know, sometimes they'll watch for cigarette butts that you might drop. Uh, other times they'll watch for a drinking glass or a plastic bottle that you might use. Um, it's really interesting to see how DNA cracks many of these cases. Thank you so much for joining me today on Case Cracked. I hope you have an excellent day. Stay safe, take care. And I'll see you on the next show on the Lord and Arts channel.